characteristic roots is the title of section 6.2 in topics in algebra by Ian Hurstein. Now in this video we are going to have definition, examples and few results on characteristic roots. Now this section deals with characteristic roots which are otherwise are also called as eigenvalues of a linear transmission and characteristic vectors uh, which are also called as eigenvectors belonging to the characteristic roots. So we are going to deal with the characteristic roots and characteristic vectors. The characteristic root of a linear transmission is a measure of the distortion induced by the transmission and the characteristic vector tells you about how the distortion is oriented. Now throughout this section, capital V denotes a finite dimensional vector space over a field F. It's a finite dimensional vector space. Now we have the formal definition of a characteristic root of T. The element lambda in F is called a characteristic root of T, uh, which is a linear transmission, if lambda i minus T is singular. A transmission which is invertible is called a regular. A transmission which is not regular is called singular. So that is known from the previous section. Now we have this theorem uh, section uh, in section 6.2, the first theorem. Uh, which is actually the criterion for uh, any lambda to be a characteristic root of t. So that is given as lambda is a characteristic root of t in f, if and only f for some non-zero vector v and v, the image of v and t is lambda times v. Now to prove this, first we will assume that lambda to be a characteristic root of t. So that means lambda i minus t is singular by the definition. Now, by theorem 6.1.13, which we had in um, the previous section, which says that if V is finite dimensional over F, then T belonging to A of V is singular. If and only if there exists a non-zero vector V in V such that the image of V and T is zero. So here, our lambda I minus T is singular. So by this theorem, there exists a non-zero vector V in V such that the image of V under this transformation should be zero vector. Now this in turn implies using the definition of addition in A of V and uh, uh, the fact that lambda and T are homomorphisms, I mean lambda I and T are homomorphisms, we have uh, this step. Now for the converse part, we shall assume that for this non-zero vector V in V, uh, the image of V under T is lambda V. So that is the image of V under lambda I minus T is zero vector. Now again by the same theorem because the converse uh, part of it we are going to use lambda I minus T must be singular because of this uh, we must have lambda I minus T to be singular. And so by the above definition if lambda I minus T is singular then lambda should be characteristic root of T. Now we have an example. Uh, for um, uh, characteristic root of a linear transmission. The same uh, uh, example can be had in the next section also. That is we can have, uh, we can easily determine our phi and minus one which are characteristic roots of T in terms of matrix. So here with uh, just a linear transmission that we are going to proceed and get uh, characteristic roots. But the same problem can also be dealt with the help of matrices also that will be done in the next section, section 6.3. So we have in this um, uh, example, we consider uh, T from R2 to R2 defined by any ordered pair XY. The image of that is the ordered pair uh, with first component X plus 4Y and the second component 2X plus 3Y for every element XY in R2. Then we're going to prove that this phi and minus 1 are characteristic roots of T for which we proceed like this, let lambda be a characteristic root of t, then uh, by the previous uh, criterion, we can have a non-zero vector uh, xy, which we can take as v. So we have vt to be lambda v. So that is what the criterion says from the previous theorem. So we are replacing our v by ordered pair xy. So this is what we get. And um, uh, the way in which our t is defined, uh, we have this step because of that definition we have this step and uh, equating the uh, first component and the second component we have the step and then we collect the terms containing x containing y 
and this is what we have now our job is to find what that lambda is so what we do is we multiply equation 1 by 3 minus lambda we have equation 3 and multiply equation 2 by 4 we have this so in the third equation we have um, this 4y into 3 minus lambda and here in the fourth one 4 into 3 minus lambda y so when we um, uh, subtract 4 from 3 this is what we get um, it's a quadratic in lambda into x equal to 0 now in this we have to have our uh, lambda square minus 4 lambda minus 5 to be 0 uh, equal to 0 is missing here so we have to have um, lambda square minus 4 lambda minus 5 should be 0 here now why this x cannot be 0 suppose I have x to be 0 then from 1 we have y to be 0 so that would give me that my ordered pair xy to be 0 but already we have mentioned that xy is a non-zero vector so solving this equal to 0 you know so solving this we get lambda to be minus 1 and 5 so 5 and minus 1 are the characteristic roots of t now in uh, lemma 6.2.4 we are going to prove that if lambda is a characteristic root of t then for any polynomial q of x in fx q of lambda is a characteristic root of q of t suppose lambda is a characteristic root of t then by theorem 6.2.2 that is the criterion what we had just now we proved that uh, there is a non-zero vector v in v such that vt equals lambda v now we shall consider the image of v under t square this we can rewrite as vt of t um, so vt can be replaced by lambda v so we have this step and then by uh, the uh, condition now uh, that uh, t is a homomorphism we make use of that condition and we get this step and replacing vt by lambda v we get this so if we continue this process we can have for any positive integer k v t power k to be lambda power k v we shall name this as equation 1 now we will consider a polynomial of degree say some m alpha naught plus alpha on x plus and so on alpha m x power m where alpha is our scalars in capital F then q of t we have this now we shall consider the image of v under q of t so it is image of v under this expression and um, so we have from this step uh, this we make use of um, uh, the definition of addition in home vv and that is a of v and um, the definition of homomorphism also so we have this um, and vt equals lambda v vt square equals lambda square v and so on we have this and um, we have uh, we are taking um, this v out for the reason that we are making use of um, the second axiom in the definition of uh, vector space alpha plus beta v is alpha v plus beta v so that is used here and um, this is nothing but q of lambda v so rewriting this this is what we get and so from again the same theorem we conclude that q of lambda is a characteristic root of q of t now next is uh, theorem uh, 6.2.5 if lambda is a characteristic root of t in a of a then lambda is a root of the minimal polynomial of t in particular t has a finite number of characteristic roots in f that is we have lambda to be a characteristic root and we are going to prove that given any transformation we can associate with that a minimal polynomial what we are going to prove here is if lambda is a characteristic root then lambda should be root of the minimal polynomial right now let p of x be the minimal polynomial over f of t then p of t should be 0 and degree of p of x should be the least if lambda is a characteristic root of t then there is a non-zero vector in v such that the image of v under t is lambda times v now as in the proof of lemma 6.2.4 just now we prove that we can have v p of t p of lambda will be characteristic root of p of t just now we proved so uh, using that we have v the image of v under p of t is p of lambda v but uh, here we have p of t to be uh, zero transformation so we have this to be uh, zero transformation takes any vector to vector zero so we have p of lambda v 
and since v is not equal to 0, it's a non-zero vector, we must have this uh, p of lambda to be 0 and that is by a lemma in section 4.1. Uh, the fourth subdivision if v is a non-zero vector then uh, alpha v equal to zero implies this alpha to be zero so in the place of alpha here we have p of lambda so p of lambda should be zero and that in turn says that lambda is the root of p of x so um, lambda characteristic root is our assumption and we have got that to be root of this minimal polynomial now since p of x is only finite number of roots um, in fact degree of p of x is at most n square where n denotes dimension of e, p of x has at most n squared roots. So it has finite number of roots. So uh, there, uh, there can only be a finite number of characteristic roots of t and f because of this association. Now um, the next question what comes to our mind is, can I have any root of q of x? Say q of x is a polynomial satisfied by t. Remember, it is not to mention here that it's minimal polynomial. Q of x is any polynomial in fx satisfied by t. Can we say that any root of or rather every root of Q of x is a characteristic root of t? And uh, the answer is in general the above statement is not true. So for which we consider this example, we consider uh, a mapping t from R2 to R2 defined by uh, any ordered pair xy is taken to ordered pair 0x then 0 is a characteristic root of t because we can uh, easily prove that for um, a non-zero element we have the image of that under 0i minus t to be 0, 0. That is the way in which we have defined our t tells this. So 0 is obviously a characteristic root of t. Now we shall consider the image of xy and a t square uh, multiplied by t minus i that is uh, we have um, composition mappings we have so x y of t of t t minus i so this is nothing but the uh, ordered pair 0 x uh, the image of this and t and we again apply becomes 0 0 and that is operated by t minus i but this being zero vector and this being homomorphism, it will take zero element to zero element only. So we have this and this is rewritten in this way. And here the zero denotes zero transmission. So as the images are equal, the mappings must be equal. So we have t square um, um, into t minus i is zero. And if q of x is taken as this uh, polynomial x square into x minus one, then it's obvious that q of t is zero. Now, the roots of q of x are obviously 0 and 1. But we are going to say that this 1 is not a characteristic root of t. Now, because um, if you consider the image of v under i, 1 into i actually, uh, i minus t, this is what we have, uh, x, y, because i into t mapping takes an element to itself. So, we have this and by the definition of t, it should be ordered pair 0, x. So this uh, gives us ordered pair x comma y minus x. Now if only we have v to be 0 vector, we can have this to be 0, 0. See we want to have the image of this under uh, lambda i minus t to be 0. Only then I can say that lambda is a characteristic rule. So for this one to be 0, we need to have this one to be 0. But this one can be 0 only if uh, both x and y are 0. So if that is the case, then we cannot say our 1 to be a characteristic root. So but it is a root of uh, q of x. So every root of any polynomial satisfied by t cannot be a characteristic root. Then when can it happen? So when um, q of x happens to be minimal polynomial, then this part, the previous uh, statement will hold good. So that is what is said in this result. If t in a of e, uh, is the linear transmission under consideration any part uh, linear transmission and p of x is the minimal polynomial for t over f having all of its roots in f then every root of p of x is a characteristic root so this p of x is minimal polynomial unlike in the previous case there was any polynomial here it is minimal polynomial so we will justify this um, that p of x actually we are proving uh, this uh, result so we are actually proving it that p of x be a polynomial of uh, uh, degree m say 
um, it's the minimal polynomial for t and lambda b its root. Now by taking uh, the factor corresponding to lambda, we have p of x to be x minus lambda into g of x where obviously degree of g of x is m minus 1. Now since p of t is 0, t minus lambda i, g of t should be 0. So, uh, we have two possibilities for this t minus lambda i, it can be regular or it can be singular. Suppose it is a regular say, then uh, we can apply the inverse on both sides so that we will have g of t to be 0. And this will uh, tell us that the uh, uh, transformation t satisfies a polynomial of degree m minus 1 which is less than the degree of the minimal polynomial. So that cannot happen and therefore t minus lambda i cannot be regular. So t minus lambda i should be singular. So by the definition we have to have lambda to be a characteristic root of t. Whether I say lambda i minus t is singular or t minus lambda i is singular that doesn't matter. So by the definition lambda is a characteristic root of t. So from theorem 6.2.5 and uh, the previous result what we have is characteristic roots of t are roots of minimal polynomial of t and roots of minimal polynomial of t are characteristic roots of t. Now we have uh, lemma 6.2.6 .6. if t and s are two linear transformations of which s is regular then t and s t s inverse have the same minimal polynomial that is they satisfy the same minimal polynomial. Uh, if t as a linear transformation and f s is also a linear transformation that is regular then we consider s t s inverse the whole square. So it is s t s inverse composition s t s inverse and the composition of mapping is associative so we have the steps from which uh, s inverse is being identity transformation we get s t square s inverse. In the same way s t s inverse the whole cube we can have as s t cube s inverse and so on. Now um, we consider q of x to be this polynomial. Uh, if we consider uh, q of s t s inverse this is what we get and this i is replaced by s s inverse. i is replaced by s s inverse and uh, uh, taking s the side and s inverse the right side this is what we have. Um, now because whenever I have t satisfying this if I take q of x to be the minimal polynomial naturally t has to satisfy that. So if whenever q of t is 0 naturally our q of s t s inverse will also be 0. Now if p of x is the minimal polynomial for t then it follows that p of t is 0. This is established for any polynomial. Now suppose I have p of x to be the minimal polynomial then p of t has to be 0 and d of p of x is the least. We shall name this as statement p. Now Suppose S T S inverse satisfies a polynomial of uh, degree R which is less than degree of the minimal polynomial. Then from 1 we have um, P of X satisfying a polynomial of degree R which is less than M. So from here we have T satisfying a polynomial of degree um, R because you have P of S T S inverse here instead of Q you will have P here. So uh, polynomial P of X. So P of S T S inverse is equal to s p of t s inverse we will have and if I have uh, the degree of that to be r which is less than m then this becomes 0 automatically that would imply that my p of t becomes 0 and that would imply that t satisfies a polynomial of degree r which is less than m that's a contradiction to statement p. So t and s t s inverse have the same minimal polynomial.